Okay, here we are back with Green Line Chechnya. Uh, we're going to start turn one. The Russian player goes first. And the first thing that we do is we roll for random events. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll two dice. The resistance die roll is multiplied by 10 and added to the Russian die roll. We'll check the random events table to see if anything happens. We'll follow the instructions printed beneath the chosen event. This is just part of the table. As you can see, it also continues on page 13. I made uh, kind of like cheat sheets of the charts and tables and stuff because they're printed on the back of the map. So you pretty much have to um, make copies of those or you can't play the game unless you have a really really good memory alright so we're going to choose the hmm, black die will be the Soviets so the Chechnyan die roll is a 3 so that'll be 3 times 10 that's going to be 30 and the Russian die roll is 4 so 34 Let's see, it looks like we're going to go on to the next, or the back side of the uh, sheet. At the random events, we have 34. Media, oh, excuse me. Media reports rebel atrocities. Roll the die and subtract the result from the political index table. Uh, in this scenario, the political index uh, starts at uh, 15. So we're going to roll a die and reduce that political index uh, points by the die roll. Die roll is a 4, so we'll go down to 11. Let's see here. There's that. And we'll adjust it to that. So. Okay, we're down to 11. And that takes care of the random events part of the game turn. Okay, we're going to begin the Russian reinforcement um, segment. We can move units when the forces available available box to the ready box during uh, a friendly reinforcement segment but uh, each unit selected is worth a certain number of political points uh, they will then go to the Russian ready box and then they can be brought on during the movement phase um, each one comes at the political cost I'm bringing in uh, another Russian headquarters. I'm bringing in the entire 266th uh, Mechanized Infantry Division and the 19th Mechanized Infantry Division and two security units. The security units will help uh, when the resistance player begins to bring in militia units via uh, a special table that he gets reinforcements from. So. I can place these units, like I said, in the ready box, and then we can bring them onto the map during the movement phase. Okay, I put the uh, Russian units in the ready box. There is a political point cost to bring those units in. As I think I stated before, the total I spent is 17 points. We will increase the political point uh, uh, track by plus 17. So we are going to go up to 7. Well, let's see. Math here. Math um, 11 and 17. Let me do some math here. Sorry. Math is not my strong point. That'll be 28. So we're going to move the ones to two. Well, actually, the ones to eight. 
and the 10 to 2, so that would be 28. Um, I really don't want to go higher than 30 if I can avoid it, but I think that's going to be inevitable because it will affect the number of reinforcements and types of reinforcements that the re resistance player will get. So I'm going to try and keep the political point cost as low as possible, but like I said, um, there's a cost to almost any action you take, so um, that's just something that the Russian player has to keep in mind. All right, after this, we will be moving on to, I believe, the movement phase. I didn't buy any aircraft this turn because I don't foresee the need for it on turn one. Yeah, we'll go to the movement segment next. Um, I don't see any major combat by the Soviets on turn one. Uh, perhaps I'll buy some next turn because I'll have the two divisions I just bought now uh, coming onto the board. They can come onto the board at the top of the screen here or they can come in uh, over there to the right. Uh, either of the Russian areas. The green borders are national borders and the brown lines are lines of communication so that gives you kind of an idea of uh, what we're looking at so that's going to be the end of the Russian reinforcement phase and we'll come back with the Russian movement phase okay we are starting with the Russian movement phase uh, let's see here you can do an administrative movement which doubles your movement allowance but you cannot begin or end in the enemy zone of control. Uh, let's see. I guess back up in the Russian reinforcements, air power assignments. I guess I, well, I didn't buy any air power, so I guess I don't have to worry about air power assignments. But if I had bought any air units, they would uh, be assigned to... The ground support or close support boxes so but since I didn't buy any I don't have to worry about it all right so these security units we're going to what am I gonna do with these guys I think I may leave them where they are since they block major roads um, not that I expect the Chechnya forces to go on the offensive anytime soon, but their position where they can uh, react to any uh, militia units which might form during the resistance player's reinforcement phase. So we will move our reinforcements that we bought uh, this turn, moving them from the ready box to the map. Uh, let's see here. I have a headquarters unit and a security unit stacked with the Russian division at the top there. So we are going to move, or try to move into position around here um, to start putting some pressure on the um, resistance player. I'm going to double check what these units are real quick. They are militia units, so we're definitely going to need the security forces there to stop movement. So I think I will move the security forces up to and adjacent if possible. Because special forces or and militia units can ignore zones of control of regular units, but they are affected by security unit zones of control, so they're the only units that can really slow down and stop a militia unit. So with that in mind, move him there for basically two movement points. 
crossing the bridge along a line of communication doesn't uh, cost anything. So that's one, two, three, and militia units don't have zones of control or security or special forces. So that helps them. <clears throat> that helps them move through uh, other enemy unit or. Yeah, other enemy units zones control by not having their own or being able to ignore another uh, enemy unit zone control, I should say. So, okay. I'm going to leave this unit here because it's guarding a Russian oil facility. But we will move. Pardon the uh, jumping around there. One there. I think we'll move this unit up to here. And we're going to move this guy. Oh no, I just said he was guarding an oil facility. Short term memory there. Uh, where are we at? Over here. He's going to move on down the road. Six movement points. So one, two, three, four. Five, and he will stop there. Uh, I have one more security unit up there in the top right. Find him again. There he is. And we're going to move him one across the river along the road is two. Well, it doesn't cost anything. That's a total of two. Three, four, five, six. So we're going to put some security units around the perimeter. I guess you couldn't really see that. Sorry about that. Anyway, he moved over to here. Now we bring on the other divisions and we will move this 24th uh, Mechanized Infantry Division from the forces that uh, started on the map. So, we're going to head, uh, let me zoom out a little bit so I can catch, so we can catch the action. All right. Gonna go ahead and move this division. You can stack up to three units. Air units don't count. Headquarters do. So one, two as we cross the border. Three, four. The second stack has a headquarters unit and an air mo air assault unit and a combined arms unit. And it will also cross the border. One, two, three, four. I think I want the air unit, the airmobile unit, to stay where he's at. He can go anywhere on the map, basically. But I want these units. I want the headquarters to be within two hexes of any units which are going to attack because they will give it a, a bonus to the attack. Uh, all right. Over here we have an overstacked. Um, you can overstack when you bring your units in, but they have to be un. You know, you have to be within stacking limits at the end of the movement and or combat phase. Or units in the hex all become reduced or flipped over to their backside. So, we'll move the security unit first using administrative movement. And I think we're going to go 1, 2, 3. He can go 12 hexes uh, using uh, uh, administrative movement. So, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So he's going to move on down to here, approaching the Chechenian border. And then we're going to move these divisions, or this division here, the 19th. We're going to move it 14 spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And 
put this straggler over here. Sorry, I'm not paying attention to where my camera is. Keeping my units in frame here. Let's zoom back out a minute here. That'll help with movement anyway. Uh, those units moved. And now I gotta bring in the division up here plus the uh, headquarters and another security unit, I think. Or, yeah. Supposed to count the hex that they enter in on, so I don't know if I did that on the other one. I'll take uh, one hex back. And down here, I'll take one hex back. Because I didn't count for the uh, entry onto the map. Alright, let's just go ahead and move the division over here first. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and that's as far as he's going to move. Otherwise, he has to stop if he gets uh, adjacent to an enemy unit, so he can't use administrative movement uh, after that. So we'll just park him right there. We're going to put one. Two, three, four, five, six. Keeping the headquarters unit within two hexes of uh, of that division, so he can provide offensive or defensive support in any upcoming combats. I think that's pretty much going to do it for the Russian player on turn one. Like I say, he's basically just setting up. Uh, we're just going to set up. Uh, a perimeter and get ready for an attack starting on turn two. Uh, that should be it. There's no no other things that we need to do in the player turn. Don't have to worry about logistics, recovery, anything to do with air or airmobile movement at the moment. Uh, so I think that's it, and we'll go over to the uh, resistance player's turn next. Okay, we're back. It's turn one. We are going to proceed with the resistance player's turn, and the first thing that they do is receive reinforcements. Each friendly reinforcement segment, the rush resistance player rolls the die and receives a number and type of units indicated on the reinforcement table. Place a militia unit in any hex not containing a Russian unit that is part of Chechnya or Ingushita, if in revolt. Any other type of unit must be placed in a resistance controlled city or town. So we will find the resistance player's uh, reinforcement table. is we will find the political index which is right now 28 so it's between 0 and 28 or 33 sorry so we will roll the one die and it will tell us you know which row that we'll look at so the Chechnyan resistance player wants to roll high as possible so we'll roll the die once or twice as indicated and, the to and total the result this is a maximum number of units that can be selected. The type units can be chosen. Roll the die once or twice. Well, that's uh, that's on the far right hand. Right now, we just roll uh, one die to see see what the uh, yeah that was that one didn't land flat. And that's not good either. It's a two. And that looks so. 
we can cross index the die roll of two and we see that they receive none so the resistance player receives no reinforcements this turn all right proceeding to the resistance players movement phase of game turn one there probably won't be a whole lot of movement just maybe a little bit of uh, repositioning units in light of the Russian players movement of his security forces um, gonna move this unit down here stopping in the security units uh, zone of control since it is a militia unit um, is there an oil facility here? Yes, an oil facility. So we should leave it as it is. Um, I don't know much what else I can really do at the moment. Their headquarters unit is stacked with a couple of militia units. But if I remove one of these other units to put the headquarters unit there for protection I'm weakening the, I'm weakening Grozny which is these two hexes here I think well I just can't give up the oil facilities without a fight so I don't think that there's going to be much else uh, much else in the way of movement I guess I could move, well, I don't want to go into into the Russian control in Gushida. So, Chi in Gushida. I'm going to go with in Gushida. If that's incorrect, uh, I apologize. Um, I don't think there's much else that the resistance player can really do at this point without having received any reinforcements. So... We'll go straight to combat for the resistance player. I don't see any, that's rough terrain. These units would at best be one-to-one, -one, so that's not gonna work out. So I think that's gonna be the end of the resistance player's turn. Logistically, he has to trace a tactical path um, to any hex, uh, any city hex or town hex in Chechnya unless uh, Georgia becomes involved in the war then he can trace a line of communication uh, up uh, down south here through Georgia but Georgia is neutral at the moment <clears throat> and only can be activated by a uh, random events rule or by a special scenario rule um, all Chechenian units should be within three hexes of a tactical path to a supply source, which, like I said, is a city. Um, a regular supply line may exit but cannot can enter a hex in the enemy zone of control, even if it's occupied by a friendly unit. The tactical path can contain enemy zone hex. The unit's hex can contain enemy zones of control, but none of the other hexes in the tactical path can contain enemy land units or enemy zones of control, even if occupied by a friendly unit. And then, of course, mechanized units are, penal, are you know, they can only trace through uh, rough sand mountain along lines of communication. So, anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for game turn one, and we will... See you next time for game turn two. Um, try to make it a little bit less choppy if I can. Um, the first turns and stuff are always kind of a, a rough, uh, rough experience for me and subsequently for you. So we'll try to make uh, turn two and there on uh, thereafter a little bit uh, more cohesive. Anyway, that's it for turn one in Green Line, Chechnya.